Hello, good afternoon. Okay. So uh, my name is Jade, Jade Kwame, um, and you're welcome to this afternoon's webinar. This webinar basically is about PEPFA and it's also to serve as a guide for anybody on this Zoom uh, to adequately be able to apply for the PEPFA State PD grants. So we are just guiding you, every applicant, on what the requirement says and how, how to navigate your way in the application process. So for those of you who are joining us and do not know what PEPFA is, but I want to assume that everybody who accepted this invitation and went through the registration process understands what PEPFA is. So PEPFA is an initiative by the US government. It was started in the year 2003 by the then president of the United States, George Bush. It's an acronym that stands for the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFA for short. So this initiative was started, you know, as a way to mitigate the difficulties or challenges of HIV and AIDS way back. Uh, last year in 2023, 20, we chugged uh, 20 years, so we are in the 21st year of PEPFA. So PEPFA has come a long way. In the last 21 years plus, uh, PEPFA has saved over 25 million lives through this initiative. Over 5.5 million uh, babies have also been born HIV free to HIV inf infected mothers. And there are several millions of people who are on antiretrovirals, that is the HIV uh, uh, medication, and it's also for free. And so for Ghana, as a way to also uh, help reach our goal uh, by the stipulated day of 2030, we offer small grants to non-governmental organizations, non-profit organizations, so that we can all help in pushing the agenda of uh, alleviating HIV and also uh, removing HIV as a public health threat by the year 2030. So PEPFA is under a bigger umbrella called GHSD, that is the Global Health Security and Diplomacy uh, Program. And it's responsible basically for coordinating and overseeing the U.S. global response to HIV and AIDS. And this I have indicated is done through the uh, U.S. President Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, uh, PEPFA. So in Ghana, there are four agencies uh, located within the embassy premises that carry out HIV and AIDS programming and implementation. These are uh, State Department where I sit. So I'm the PEPFA media specialist for PEPFA. I sit as a State Department. We also have CDC uh, taking up a portion of the work. We have our, our colleagues from USAID and we have uh, colleagues from DOD who take care of the military, all because we want to be able to reduce or remove uh, HIV as a public health threat by the year uh, 2030. And in the last 21 years, PEPFA has done well investing over 100 billion in the global HIV and AIDS response. And this is the largest commitment ever by a, a nation to address a single disease in history. So we have saved millions of lives and we are still counting. So basically, we invited you here today uh, as indicated early on, to guide you on how to apply for state PD grants. Uh, the process can be quite elaborate. And so this is the best time to listen in with rapt attention and get all the details you need. But also we offer you the opportunity to send in your questions. So in the chat box, you can type your questions and we'll readily try to answer all the questions. We won't take too much of your time. It will be snappy. So uh, in Ghana, we basically, just a second. In Ghana, we have our program objectives. We have our program objectives. And what we are doing as PEFA 
is that we aim at eliminating HIV and AIDS as a public health threat. We are also uh, poised to achieve the UN AIDS goal of 95, 95, 95 by the year 2030. So the UN AIDS goal of 95, 95, 95 stipulates of 95, 95, 95 stipulates that uh, by the year 2030, we expect that 95% of people, uh, of all Ghanaians, so to speak, will uh, know their state, they will test to know their status. And so out of this, 95% of people who are found to be HIV positive will be put on treatment. Okay, so after a stipulated period of six months and above, they would achieve what we call viral load suppression. So basically, that's what uh, it is about, the UNH school of 95, 95, 95. So it, it's just to quickly touch on the objectives. And we say that we want to increase access to HIV testing and counseling services. We want to ensure the timely initiation and adherence to the ART, that's the antiretroviral drugs, uh, and then we also want to strengthen health systems and capacity building efforts. But for a uh, state department where I sit, we have two flagship programs. The two pl flagship programs are the media training, that is for journalists. And then we also have the anti-stigma campaign. So um, what we require of participants or applicants to put in is that because this media training is for journalists, I keep saying that um, HIV and AIDS is a very technical area. If you don't have the knowledge and you don't understand what it entails, you may not be able to pass on the relevant and accurate information to uh, our target audience. And so uh, for this grant, we are expecting two applications. So you cannot apply for all two you know, programs, that is, you can't apply for the media training need, and, and then I also apply for the anti-stigma program. It should be one program per organization. So we are not expecting individuals to apply, but as I said early on, we are expecting organizations to apply. Organizations who already have uh, experience in that, that is a plus anyway, and organizations who know the HIV and AIDS terrain, so we're looking at uh, offering accurate HIV reporting and information dissemination as a, as, as a program for journalists uh, in three selected regions. Three selected regions because PEFA operates in three regions in Ghana currently. We operate in the Western region, we operate in the Western North region, and we operate in the Ahafo region. And so uh, we, we also... Um, are looking at giving you ample time to apply for this program. And so for those of you who are privy to our notice of funding opportunity or even the, the one that we posted on the website, you will see that we have a deadline. Uh, the application deadline is July 30th of this year. By close of business, July 30th, you should have submitted your application. And we look at the quality of your program idea we look at your uh, organizational capacity, whether your organization is able to implement or carry out the programs that it has listed to do. We look at your budget. We look at how your monitoring and evaluation, you know, program and sustainability, you know, uh, concepts are feasible. So uh, when you submit, you submit to an email address, you can see that on your screen, which is passaccragrantastate.gov. It's highlight, highlighted in blue, passaccragrantastate.gov. And you should use PEPFA FY2024 NOFO. NOFO, as you heard me say, is the Notice of Funding Opportunity. You use that as the subject. Uh, we are hoping that depending on the availability of funding, uh, if you are successful, uh, we are hoping that the implementation of the program will start in October this year. 
I have touched all already on uh, some of the objectives and we want to also increase uh, the knowledge. We also want to um, sensitize people because of course, uh, when you talk about HIV and AIDS these days, people say that, oh, it's no more as, as serious as it used to be because uh, COVID was more dangerous. But HIV and AIDS is still with us. So if you're on this line and you're wondering why HIV and AIDS, it is because HIV has no cure. It has no cure. People are living longer lives thanks to ARVs, but it still has no cure. So we cannot rest on our oars. We still have to push the agenda forward so that it will no longer be a public health threat in, in, in Ghana and even the world over by the stipulated uh, date or year of 2030. And for the broader objectives, we want to reduce infections dramatically. And also we want to uh, uh, inch towards uh, sustainability, long-term sustainability by strengthening the, the capabilities of government, of organizations, and then we also are big on impact. We are big on data. We are big on impact. So uh, our efforts will not be in futility. We are hoping that we will make the impact needed. And, and that's why we are encouraging most of you who are adequately uh, prepared and who have what it takes to join us to implement this program and make the huge impact that we desire to make. So for the media training, we wish to empower a journalist and improve access to accurate information. Wherever I go, I say that uh, the fourth estate of the realm, that is the journalist, they they are the agenda. Every just bear with us. They are the agenda setters, and so every thing that they will share on radio or on TV or even on social media people tend to believe it outright. And so if we don't train them to be adequately prepared, uh, they will give out false information and it will be to our detriment. And so we train journalists, we select them and we train them adequately because HIV and AIDS is a very technical area. Uh, there is the possibility of uh, mis even mispronouncing words. There's the possibility of explaining uh, stuff that may be very different from what it intends. And also for uh, uh, a phrase like 95, 95, 95, if you don't train a journalist to understand and appreciate what it is, uh, they may give a different explanation to their listeners or to their, their target audience. And so for the anti-stigma campaign that I mentioned, we basically look at uh, engaging communities, sensitizing them enough to eliminate HIV stigma and discrimination. I have said time and again that stigma derails our um, desire or our plan to eradicate HIV and AIDS by the stipulated date and remove it as a public health threat. Why do I say this? I say this because stigma makes people move from one uh, area to the other. So somebody may be living in Accra and will not go to the hospital in Accra to even test or even take their ARVs because they are scared that others may see them and spread the news, rumor that they are HIV infected and society may you know, frown on that and may maltreat them, may discriminate against them. So when we both have an understanding of how HIV is transmitted, and we have an understanding of how to protect ourselves from being infected, we will not maltreat people. And so stigma is big in our country and we need to do all we can to eradicate stigma and discrimination. If people are not scared of stigma, they will readily walk into a facility test and they will not have the infection and go on uh, uh, infecting others but they would know what to do. They would go on treatment so that their viral load is suppressed eventually and they will not be able to uh, infect others or transfer the virus to their partners. So for the media training, we're looking at uh, topics like 
HIV and AIDS reporting, how you can couch your story very differently. We're looking at innovative ways that the journalists can, you know, can uh, report their news. We are looking at social media. Social media in our world today is big and it is a great advocacy tool. So we teach all of these. So we're looking at up, up the applicant who is successful, uh, being able to come up with uh, a proposal that, um, that is able to uh, give the a holistic training to uh, the journalists selected so that we can um, push their role to be a very effective person. For the journalists, people call them gong gong beaters. Uh, there are so many curative ways by which they can um, they can affect the lives of people through the information they put out there. So um, the ball is in the court of everyone online listening and watching that we need very creative proposals to be able to go a notch higher in our media training. For the anti-stigma campaign, uh, what we're looking out for is uh, to be able to work in tandem with people like uh, traditional authorities, the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice in the PEFA focus regions. Uh, we're looking at um, working effectively with social network groups because their groups are broad. Social network, I mean uh, the seamstresses or dressmakers, the artisans, we're looking at the drivers. And these people, believe you me, they have a, a very strong network and there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer influence. And so if we're able to uh, mobilize them and pass on the appropriate information to them, uh, we would go a long way in achieving our set target. And for the assembly, for example, the local assembly, uh, it is imperative that we involve them in some of these things because uh, together with the traditional authorities, they're able to enact bylaws that help to punish uh, people who discriminate against persons living with HIV. And it might not be so prevalent in Accra, but in the hard to reach communities, for example, um, there's a lot of stigma and discrimination. And so at the end of the day, they move from those localities to the bigger cities where nobody knows them. And then they, uh, they pass on the infection to others. So it's important that when we target them, we involve uh, these authorities, the traditional authorities, for example, and the local assemblies who would enact bylaws and punish offenders so that it can serve as a deterrent to offenders. So in all of this, in your application, we expect that you are able to list the milestones. So when you, you write out your proposal, what you plan to do, what are the milestones? What are what do you plan to achieve? Are they quantifiable? So when you look on the screen, I've listed a couple of them. For example, you should be able to tell us uh, at the end of your report, which I'll come to briefly later, uh, how many people you reached, what you did, uh, how you're able to, for example, bring a, num a number of defaulters uh, back to care, how many people were introduced and and, and all of that. Um, I have talked about um, people that we're looking out for. These are organizations that are not for profit or non-governmental organizations who are focused on media related and health issues. So you should not be green at all to send a proposal. You should have the knowledge and experience is actually a plus. When you're writing, indicate what, what have you done before? We want to look at those ones too. But this one I am moving on to is, is very, very important. The eligibility information. When you put in your application, you should have registered on a portal we call sam.gov, www.samsam.gov. Um, I will talk in detail about that 
and you should have a unique identity number or unique entity identity. So in addition to your proposal, in addition to your budget and other documents, you should have a valid registration on sam.gov. And uh, because of time, because of time, I, I don't want to go into the whole process, but thankfully this um, session is being recorded. So it will be made available to everybody who joined us or anybody who um, is listed and sent in their email. It will also hopefully be available on YouTube. So you can go in, uh, pick it and click on the links, but it's quite a simple process. If you read the instructions carefully, and, and, and then also, um, uh, you should also note that sum.gov is a process that takes a bit of time. So if you have time between now and July 30th to submit your proposal, then you need to start the registration process now. You need to, there's a quick start guide for everyone who wants to register. There are additional resources you can look at for whether you are, if you are an old, um, if you have, if you are registered already, you need to review or you, you need to renew your registration. And then if you are new, there's also a link you can click on to follow the process. If I want to go through that, it will take all of our time because our time is already, already limited. So we have forms that we call the SF forms. We call the SF forms. These are SF424 and SF424A. There's another called the SF424B, but that is not too difficult to, um, to fill, but you need to be able to fill those forms. And all these forms are available online. They are available online. Once you have access to this document, you should be able to access these forms online uh, on, on grants.gov. And then you'll be able to fill the forms and attach to your documentation to send to pass Accra grants at state.gov. So for the proposal, we are looking at a maximum of six pages. We're looking at your summary uh, you tell us about your organization, your problem statement, what it is, what are your goals. Important to note is that your goals should be measurable. You remember I talked about impact and I talked about data and PEFA is big on impact. You, you well define your programs and then you list your activities, your methodology, your design, uh, your schedule and time because we have a stipulated time of implementation. It's normally from the beginning of October this year, and we end by the end of August, August, uh, August next year. So August, 2025. So are you partnering with an organization? We need to have some detail of them. Uh, so your, your budget, when you list out items one by one, you also need to uh give us a narrative more like a detailed description of every budget line or every budget expense and these need to align with the sf sf424 forms so please take note of that so for the required documentation you need to you need to present a one a page cv and list the the personnel that you'll be working with, because uh, we know that you are not working alone. Normally you would have staff, field staff who will be supporting you. If you're a partner with an organization, we will also need a letter from them detailing their roles and responsibilities. If you require official letters, why not? We'll look at all of these things. And I repeat again, without a sum.gov registration, you are disqualified. We are really, really insistent on, on that. And we don't want a situation where you tell us that, oh, you've registered, it's a process, and so we have to wait. No, by the time you're submitting uh, your application, your sum.gov registration should be available, and you should have your number. Okay, so... 
I have already spoken about the deadline, but there are funding restrictions. So there are rules to this. U.S. government money cannot be used to purchase alcohol. And this we will try to find in the risk assessment. I'll come to that. You cannot use USG money to purchase alcohol. You cannot use this funding to engage in partisan politics. You cannot do charity with this number because it is for, you know, a program implementation. And we're looking at the impact. We are hoping to have results, results that are measurable. You cannot use it for construction programs. So you don't take this money and say, I want to build a school with it. Or I want to build a car with it. I want to buy a car with it. I want to build, a, we used to say it's a KVIP with it for this community. It's a no, no, we, you cannot do that. You cannot use it for fundraising campaigns, especially this year being a, a political year. You cannot lobby for programs to be legislated. The only thing that we allow, and this we do with you, you don't do it in isolation, is that we engage the traditional authorities to see how best, you know, bylaws can be enacted, you know, to punish people who discriminate against others, to serve as a deterrent, because stigma and discrimination is really prevalent in these uh smaller regions or communities please you cannot use this number uh, this funding no matter how small the figure you take out of it to do research it is not for research purposes so please note this go assessment you know why i say this sometimes we may do a full assessment but in the assessment too, we expect that you're very open with us. You're very candid with us. We do our assessment. And when we let you know the do's and don'ts, we also believe that you're telling us everything we need to know the truth. But even before you are awarded, you know, the funding or you are awarded the grant, we do a rigorous risk assessment. A risk assessment basically is to find out whether you would be or you can be in full compliance, okay? And the purpose is to identify internal and external risks that may harm or jeopardize implementation of the program. Uh, so we look at components like risk identification. So we work with you to identify uh, whether there are any risks at all. Uh, we also, these are potential problems that may rise up. We also do uh, an assessment to see what, if there are risk or how big the assessment is, whether it's big or small. We also do the risk mitigation, okay? Uh, for example, if there is any risk at all, how can we mitigate it? How can we reduce reduce the risk, uh, the effect of the uh, multi multiplication of the risk? And then we do the risk monitoring. We do the risk monitoring. So this is also key for us. Then we will look at other categories like um, your organization, whether you have what it takes to implement the program, we do the programmatic uh, bit uh, where we we find out whether your program activities are or will pose a risk because of how perhaps sensitive it may be. But thankfully for PEPFAM uh, anti-stigma programs, we normally would have very, very little risk. But sometimes even the city or the, the town that we go to, we identify if there are potential risks. For example, if there's a, a political unrest of a sort going in there, we're going on there, we try to, you know, um, stay back for, from, from that. So risk assessment is a requirement. So uh, when when we award you and we are asking all these questions, you bear with us. We are mandated to do that before we can offer you, you know, funds. Uh, so uh, before you accept, you should know all of these. And um, 
I will move to uh, questions and answers briefly. We still have a, a bit of time, but I just want to add, I just want to add briefly uh, the award faces. So uh, we actually have uh, the pre-award phase. We have the pre-award phase. Um, the pre-award phase is before we award you. Uh, that is when we receive all your documentation. We receive all the documentation. We do all the risk assessment. We speak with you. Uh, most of, often, if it is, most often we do a, a visit to your office because I'm sure that, you know, every organization will have a, an office, no matter how small it is. So we visit you in the office and we make our own uh, observations. We do our own calculations. So we have four, uh, the federal uh, assistance life cycle. We have the pre-award phase. We have the award phase. We have the post-award phase and we have the close out award phase. Okay, I have a few minutes. So uh, for the pre-award phase is where the major work is done. We create the award in the system and uh, we do a lot of back and forth. Sometimes we negotiate the, the budget. Sometimes we help you to redo the proposal uh, to tune it to how we want it to be done. For the award phase, we, we work on some other documentation in tandem with you. But I like to say that for uh, the grants, those who are, those you may interface with, they are normally two people. The grant officer, who is an American, American supervisor, and the grant officer representative. So these two people are the people that you would most of the time interface with. The grant officer, who is normally an American, reserves the right to approve your application. So... In, in as much as a grant officer representative may do all the background work, they all right to you. We do some other paperwork. We spell out the terms and conditions. We follow up with you to ensure that our system. I hope you can hear me. You can see me. I'm I'm getting an. Uh, okay, I think it's the, it's the internet, but it's restored now. So we also expect that during the award phase to involve us in the project. You don't just go and carry out a, a, an activity in the region and come back to tell us. We work in tandem closely. We walk through with you. So if you're having a project, for example, in Ahafo, we you need to plan it with us. Most of the time we are on the field with you to do this. And reporting, reporting is very important for us. We expect quarterly reports, we expect half year reports, and we expect end of project report. These are some other ways by which we can monitor you. So our, the correspondence through email is important. Uh, the uh, reports, sometimes you can even do interim reports. We also do our very own reports after we have come back on the field, which we call our own monitoring report. So we don't want a situation where you'll be given funding and then report writing becomes difficult. And so that's why for the funding, we don't give all the money. Normally we give it in tranches. So sometimes it's as many as in four tranches and we use this to monitor uh, your capability to really do a, a good job and to bring in immeasurable benefits. Um, because... Because of time, I will I will pause here and just say that uh for the closeouts, the closeout is the phase that you know we receive the final reports where we do an assessment that is a people call it a debrief, even though we may have you know shorter debriefs at every quarter 
you know, but we do, we close out the grant, we write to you. And then if there is any final payment to be made, we make that payment uh, through you filling out and signing a form we call SF270. And that is for payment at every, you know, at every point in time where we need to, you know, um, um, we need to send you uh, money. We need to send you funds. And so I will pause here because of time. And then if you have any question, you put it in the chat box and we will readily try to answer your your program. This is exhaustive. And so uh, normally we are always there to guide you through the process at any point in time. So if you have any questions, let me let me see. If you have any, any questions, put it in the chat box. I may have missed a thing or two, which is which is quite salient. So okay. Someone says, hello, thank you for the information. I'm a documentary videographer and I will, I would like to know if this is only restricted to journalists. Thank you very much. So uh, we, have we have two programs actually. I'm sure you may not have joined me from the beginning. One is a training for journalists or the media and the other is a community engagement, community debates activation. And, and so um, for the videographer, I don't know whether it's a personal thing you do or uh, you want to be part of the training. If you could explain that, uh, I would really be in a better place to answer your question. Are you applying as, um, as a participant in the media training? Uh, or you're applying as an organization, I mean, as an implement. Okay, so um, Carl, where where do you live? Where do you live? Because I did say early on that PEFA operates in three regions. I have four, Western, North, and Western region currently. So if you are outside of these regions, it makes it difficult to you know, pull you all the way into the uh, these trainings. Normally, we select journalists in the region and around the regions. Uh, so for Takwa, we, we will select journalists in the Western region so they can come from as far as Takwa. They, they can come as far as from Bibiyeni, surrounding districts. So, okay, you said you live in Kaswa. You live in Kaswa, okay. Uh, so uh, you can send us an email, okay? You can send us an email on PAS Accra, P-A-S in capital letters. Accra, first letter A is capital. And then Accra, you continue. Uh, PAS Accra grants at state.gov, state, S-T-A-T-E, at state.gov. So we can look at how best, okay, whether it is possible to rope you into. Okay, so Christopher, Oh, that's nice. Christopher says that he was part of the media training in Ahafu, Kenya. I said just recently, that's awesome. I hope you learned a lot and you are implementing everything we set out to do. That's good. That's good, Christopher. It's good to hear from you. Okay. Uh, hi, so the media team apply for the grant based in on any of the target regions? Somebody's asking this question. Uh, when you say the media team, what 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 do you mean? I don't I don't really get you. Um, can one apply as a startup or is solely for already existing businesses? Okay, I don't know who this is coming from, but I think it's somebody called Christopher. Christopher, uh, you should already uh, have an NGO. This is a not-for-profit, okay? Anybody who is awarded this grant is not being awarded to make profit, not at all. It is so that you 
are able to implement the program and make the impact. Of course, certain overhead costs are allowable in the budget. Okay, we know that, yes, you will take a car from one place to the other. There will be staff, field staff on the project that you need to pay an allowance. So these are allowable costs in the budget. And then you spell it out in the narrative, but it is not to make profit. So um, it's not a business. No, if you are a business owner, you cannot apply. It is for not for profit. And, and and NGOs, uh, non-governmental organizations. Thank you very much. Yeah, so yes, yeah, somebody has already uh, answered the question. It says uh, it's for health reporters and people who associate with health reporters. For example, we have recently added bloggers because uh, bloggers also make news. And as I did indicate, uh, we are big on social media now because social media has a wider reach than the usual traditional uh, media. Whatever you put on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, people would readily access it and it will impact their lives uh, faster than when you put it in the dailies. So we are big on social media now. So, um. The bloggers are also very much included in this. We we want to go all lengths to make an impact. Put also put out the right information, accurate information consistently, and make the necessary impact. Yeah. Okay, somebody is asking. Yes, so the organization should be an existing one. Yes, and you can apply. If only you believe that your organization has what it takes, it has the requisite skill, it has the requisite competence, it has the requisite uh, experience and knowledge. Because uh, as I said early on that HIV and AIDS is a very technical area. And so if you don't have the knowledge, you will just come and mess up. And we look out for all these things during the risk assessment. So we are looking for people who really qualify yes basically that's it okay so um i did say that send your questions send the application to pass accra state.gov yes that's the correct email ad address somebody is saying is asking yes so we are wrapping up and we just want to uh say that thank you very much all of you who have joined uh this webinar is recorded. So we'll put it on the U.S. Embassy's YouTube page. You can access it. And also the notice of funding opportunity is on the Embassy's website, U.S. Embassy's website. You can also access it. And the deadline for application is July 30th this year. And we will be looking forward to hearing from you very soon. So my name is Jid and I'm the PEFA Media Specialist for the U.S. Embassy. Thanks for your time this afternoon. I wish you all the best and may the best applicant or best organization win. We are here to work in tandem with you, you know, to make the impact we desire and to remove HIV as a public health threat by the year 2030. Thank you. Bye.